Welcome to the Pre-Snap Podcast presented by Line Star, your best NFL player prop bets for Thursday night football in week four. Season is flying by. Alongside my co-host Tyler Weeman, I am Shannon Somerville. All of our picks are available on Underdog Fantasy, Prize Picks, Sleeper, or Chalkboard. If you don't have those apps, download them. Use the promo code LINESTAR when you do. You'll get up to $100 of your deposit matched. So make sure to take advantage of that deal. Links to that are below. Those apps are amazing, especially if you're in a state like I am where sports betting is not yet legalized, but this is a great way. It's considered daily fantasy sports, so you're able to get in on the action for Thursday night football. This is a, a weird game we were just saying before the show started and chatting beforehand. Tyler, the Detroit Lions and the Green Bay Packers. Uh, maybe a little revenge for last year when uh, Detroit nudged the Green Bay Packers out of the playoffs last year, but... Either way, these are two teams with a lot of injury questions that kind of that is what we were referring to when we say this is kind of weird because we don't actually know. There's some major playmakers that we don't know the status of. A lot of people listed as questionable in this one. So I guess when you look at this overall matchup from a props perspective, I guess how do you uh, kind of handicap things for yourself? Yeah, that's exactly why we are saying it's weird is there's major playmakers on both sides that are questionable that all missed last week. And obviously it plays a big role. So we have Jair Alexander that mm-hmm. missed. Uh, Christian Watson hasn't played yet. Aaron Jones missed. And then David Montgomery on uh, the Lions side. So there's a lot of different moving factors in this. And uh, it's one of the reasons we stayed away from Amon Ross St. Brown and, mm-hmm. you know, some of our picks are just because of that as well so uh makes it a little harder for things but we can also maybe try to capitalize and find a little bit of edge Mm -hmm. like i mentioned these picks are available underdog fantasy sleeper prize picks or wherever you place your sports bets tyler last week we had a nice week in our prop betting endeavors we were 11 of 16 overall for week three on this thursday night show in particular we were two of three So we're looking to continue the momentum here. If you haven't already, please do us a huge favor. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and comment below. A comment enters you into our Prop Bets contest. If you watch our shows, you know we've been uh, cranking out the money gun lately and giving out a lot of money on this show because a comment enters you in to win $50 if Tyler and I both hit our props that we're going to present today. So let's get after it today. Tyler, the first prop we are giving out for today is Green Bay Packers wide receiver Romeo Dobbs, over 39 and a half receiving yards. Dobbs averaging 43 receiving yards per game. Last week, five receptions for 75 yards against the Saints on 12 targets. Seems like they're really ratcheting up his target share. What do you make of this line for him heading into this Thursday night game against the Lions? Yeah, I mean, saying Dobbs average on the season, I think is a little bit misleading because he started the year injured and was limited. He finally worked himself up to 86% of the snaps last week. That garnered 12 targets. Without Christian Watson, he is their number one, and he's facing the beat-up Detroit secondary who's missing some defensive backs. So I think for a guy that could get 12 targets again, 39.5 is just too low of a number for a meh defense. Another thing I was thinking about with this one was how disappointing the run game has been for the Packers so far this season. And we don't know the status of Aaron Jones. Will he even be playing in this one? He's listed as questionable. We're just not really sure. A.J. Dillon's been kind of a disappointment for them. They just haven't been able to get it going. And so Jordan loves having to pass a lot more. And I think that's providing a lot of opportunities for Romeo Dobbs and will continue to do so, especially in this game. And given if, in fact, um, Jones is out once again, or uh, we also have Christian Watson. Uh, not sure what he's going to be doing in this game, mm-hmm. if he's listed as, he is listed as questionable. But either way, we do like this one, regardless of their injury status is correct. I, absolutely. I think that Jones probably is a little more likely than Watson. Mm-hmm. Um, but even if Watson does play, he's not going to come out with, you know, a hundred percent snap share. He's yeah. going to be limited. This is a issue that actually, you know, caused him to miss time last year and it's reappearing. So whenever that's happening, you have to be a little more cautious. So yeah. I think Watson might be a little bit more on the doubtful side of questionable, but okay. 
He's listed as questionable, so that's all we know. <laughs> all right, so we're rolling with Dobbs over 39 and a half receiving yards. Next up, it is time for Tyler and I to make our picks. Tyler, where are you headed for a pick on this Thursday night NFC North game? I am going to go with Jared Goff lower than 255.5 passing yards. That's minus 115 in sports books. Look, for the year, he's averaging 273 yards, but he's been under in two of three. Uh, the Green Bay pass defense is pretty solid. Jair Alexander could be back, and Goff, str- or Goff struggle- struggles while away, and has struggled against the Green Bay Packers over the last few years. So I think it's going to be hard for him to get the over. Yeah, one of the trends last year that we took advantage of in the prop market was Jared Goff on the road or Jared Goff in cold weather temperatures. And I don't know what the temperatures are going to be at Lambeau in this one, but he does struggle outdoors and not in the friendly confines of that uh, indoor stadium that he's so used to. So a lot of times we like to take the under on passing yards for Jared Goff when he is on the road like he is here today. So I like it there. All right, for my pick, I'm going to a Green Bay Packers tight end that's been a pleasant surprise. And Is this the year for tight ends in this rookie class? They've been awesome this season, but specifically Luke Musgrave. So I'm taking him over 35 and a half receiving yards. That's minus 125 in the sports books. Um, The former Oregon State tight end is averaging 41 yards per game. He's gone over that 35 and a half mark in two of three games. Now, what I also like about this is the fact that he's on the field for over 80% of snaps because he's super athletic and he's a really good blocker as well. And when you look against uh, at the matchup for him today going up against Detroit, they've actually allowed the most receiving yards to opposing tight ends this season, giving up 87.6 receiving yards per game to opposing tight ends. When you look at who they've played, Kyle Pitts, Noah Fant, they've all gone over their respective overs, and I expect that trend to continue here. They've really been leaning into Luke Musgrave in this one. As I mentioned when we were talking about Romeo Dobbs and taking the over on his prop, I think that run game for the Packers has been disappointing, so they've had to rely on a lot of other playmakers in the passing game, and I think they'll continue to do so with Luke Musgrave here. So we're taking the over on Musgrave, over 35 and a half receiving yards. You can find those on on underdog fantasy prize picks sleeper or chalkboard wherever you place your bets and when you download those apps use the promo code line so you can get up to 100 dollars of your deposit match and i believe right now for a limited time underdog fantasy is offering a 500 dollar deposit match so go take advantage of it use that promo code line to get your free money and start placing some bets all right now it is time for touchdown calls of the game. Tyler, where are you headed for a touchdown tonight? I'm going to go with a guy that is questionable in David Montgomery. I think he likely plays tomorrow. He's plus 105 uh, to score a touchdown. I just want to say now that if he is out, my pick just will go over to uh, Gibbs, who's mm-hmm. plus 120 okay. for a touchdown. So David Montgomery has had 100% of the goal line work when he's been playing so far this year, this is a role that led to 17 touchdowns for Jamal Williams last year. The same Jamal Williams that is currently averaging 2.7 yards per carry. David Montgomery is much better than Jamal Williams, and I think he's going to get in the end zone. All right. I'm going to Detroit's second round selection, the tight end Sam Laporta for an anytime touchdown at plus 240. Sam Laporta leads all tight ends in the NFL in receiving yards. He's second in receptions and third in yards after catch. He's been unbelievable this season, averaging 62 yards per game, and his targets are increasing each week. He's got exceptional route running ability. He's explosive off the line of scrimmage, and he's just got a willingness to absorb contact. I also love the fact that his head coach, Dan Campbell, used to be a tight end, and his offensive coordinator, Ben Johnson, used to coach tight ends. These are guys who know how to put tight ends in the best position possible, and they know the value that they have with Sam Laporta. They're going to use him especially in the red zone, so I like Sam Laporta's price tag here for a touchdown at plus 240. How Awesome has Sam Laporta been. I know a lot of he's, fantasy owners are very happy with his production. Real, 
right? Yeah, he's been unreal so far. And I mean, Iowa is quietly just tight end university, huh? Right. George Kittle yeah. went there, TJ Hawkinson, Sam Laporta, Noah Fant. You know, there's what are they there's feeding a list. him out there. Man, oh man. Seriously. And it's rare that we have rookie tight ends come into the NFL yes. and perform at the level that he is. And so mm -hmm. this season we we're seeing a couple rookies that have just been like Musgrave as well has been another mm -hmm. one that's that's been popping for sure. And in fact, I think he would be even more so. And if Jordan Love's missed him on two deep shots, he would have had a touchdown and I think we would have been talking using his name even more for this show probably mm -hmm. had he uh jordan love been able to connect connect with him i expect them to start connecting on a few more deep balls pretty soon and then we'll we'll start talking about him once again but mm -hmm. it's been i'm sure we will Both <laughs> an interesting been trend to see. let's talk about this overall game and give our game picks here just because it's fun minus two mm -hmm. one and a half rather in favor of the lions in this one who you got uh, I think with the injury situation, the Lions pull this one out. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm a little worried about Green Bay just, you know, being as banged up as they are. Both teams are banged up, but I think Green Bay's injuries are going to affect the team a little bit more. Yeah, I was at first kind of leaning into the Packers. And you know what? This one's at Lambeau, knowing... Mm -hmm. um, Jared Goff's, I wouldn't call them struggles anymore on the road, but, you know, he does, I guess, his passing game isn't as, uh, I guess, superior as it is at home. But I was looking at this matchup thinking to myself, yeah, the Green Bay Packers could have a tough time in this one. Yes, they have an exceptional offensive line, but they haven't re really been able to get the run game going, and I think that's going to be a huge factor in this one, especially against a really good Detroit defense. Um, so I got to side with the Lions in this one. I don't know. I, I think uh, Dan Campbell and the Lions take this one on the road. Yeah. I, it was a hard one I to just handicap the Lions, given those injuries. Yeah, the Lions, I think, are the more complete team at this point. You know? Yeah. yeah. So I got to go with that, even though they are away and Goff isn't quite as good as away. But Yeah, uh, I mean, when you're looking at the Packers, that is a very young team on, like, every mm – -hmm aspect and you need a lot of those veterans like Jair Alexander you need him to be healthy and back there and we don't know if he's going to be playing or rather so yeah I like where your head's at I'm with you with you on the Lions. so here we go uh, with Here's... that being said I do like the Monroe St. Brown prop if mm -hmm. Jair is out oh yeah for sure um, mm -hmm. I love Amon Ross St. Brown. I think he's awesome. And it always seems like he's so underrated. Like nobody really talks about him and then he, but he just consistently puts up over a hundred yards. Yeah. Like it's yeah. nothing. Um, so yeah, for good. sure, what we had looked up before the show was that, you know, Jair Alexander, he's such an impactful player in this game. Mm -hmm. I guess the only game that Amon Ra has gone over his receiving yards against the Packers has been when he is out. So if he is out, hammer that over that's a good little tip there <laughs> all right all right that's gonna do it for us here on the pre-snap podcast make sure to check out the line star app it's where we go to find the best analytics statistics everything you need to dominate in daily fantasy with the uh, optimizer tools everything plus a props ai tool is helping us in the prop market We've been crushing it in the props this week, especially on our baseball picks. So make sure to check out that show as well. And Take Down Tyler will be having a daily fantasy breakdown for all mm -hmm. you guys who are out there going to put in some lineups for DFS for Thursday night. So make sure to subscribe to the Line Star channel. And again, comment below for your chance to win $50. All you got to do is comment. And you're automatically entered in to win $50 if Tyler and I both hit our props. We need Luke Musgrave over 35 and a half receiving yards and Jared Goff lower than 255 and a half passing yards. Let's do it. Good luck, everybody. We'll see you guys next time.